Hello and welcome to part 2 of my video on how to create a modular ready to stem template. Uh, as I explained before, uh, what we're trying to do here is to create basically a template that works like an empty canvas where you can quickly load instruments prepared in advance which are ready to be stemmed and delivered to publishers. I say publishers here specifically because this is really an approach I mostly use for library music. Uh, publishers typically uh, want stem with reverbs and FX's uh, baked in as they want to provide clients with options of quickly changing the mix slightly by altering the balance of different elements or uh, by muting tracks, uh, dropping all the stems uh, in the editor timeline rather than mix it from scratch. And the other thing uh, to keep in mind, the other requirement that is typically asked uh, to composers is to keep the same length for every single stem. Uh, this means that you're basically um, need to keep uh, uh, silences that you might have at the beginning of one stem. Uh, this is again to make sure that once you drop all the tracks in, they basically look uh, all the same length uh, on the editor's timeline. Um, to do this, we're going to show it with my using my track uh, Cerebral. This is a library track that I've been uh, writing. It's an underscore track. It's quite useful, used a lot in true crime and many other uh, different genres, a lot in documentaries. Basically, uh, great as, you know, backstory when they're, uh, when they're explaining an investigation. Use it a lot on TV series that I, uh, that I score, this genre of music. It featured true. elements like... Um, guitars, mallets, and things like that. And to do this particular track, I've been using a lot of instrument. In fact, I believe all the instrument from this track come from In Session Audio, which is a contact developer that I uh, that I like quite a lot, and they're coming out with instruments that are always very, very interesting. There are a number of mallets, um, guitar harmonics, and things like that, but uh, we'll have a look. So if you go straight here, uh, you'll see, uh, oops, this is not needed. Uh, if you come straight here, you'll notice that uh, I basically have uh, these three tracks, which are pretty much ready to stem. So what I mean is that if I select them all and I click on logic file, export three tracks as audio files it's fine i can click on it and you know decide uh, whatever i want to call uh, my stem typically i would write track name then stem uh, track name as in the actual uh, you know music track uh, then stem and then the track name as in the individual uh, instrument uh, i would uh, make sure that is in wave 24 bit and this is important is that you want to extend the file length to project end and then I can click uh, th this extend file length to project end is again to make sure that they're all the same length and then you can click export in the bounce folder and you'll have your stamps ready to deliver to publisher however while this would work on these first tracks uh, it wouldn't work for for others here we see that I have a, a track folder this is a sum in track folder if you don't know the difference between a summing track uh, stack in logic and a normal folder is that the second is just for organizational purpose whereas if you go uh, to the mixer over here i think it's behind you'll notice that the track folder have all the outputs stemmed to a common bus then then goes to the stereo out and this is what you want because you put an effects in my case there is a delay that i use for one of the tracks this one Mm, that is used as a return for this sand and if what I want to do is to export this track and make it as one track as one stem you see here there are different elements there's flood this uh, harmonics here and then another word that comes here from riff generation and here again oh sorry let's cycle So it's all guitar stuff and I want it all under one stem, put them all together in one summing track and include the, the effects. And what I want to do is the, exactly the same thing here because you see here I got some synth pulses. 
that are being sent to this return track, which is a reverb, Valhalla reverb, with a bit of EQ before it to not make it sound too muddy. This, by the way, is one of my favorite presets in, in Valhalla vintage verb is the Tyrell hole. It's a huge hole, eight seconds DK, um, which can get very muddy. So I always put uh, a bit of uh, EQ to roll off uh, the low hand um, before that. If I ex used the previous method to uh, export this, it would export it as two separate tracks, which is not what I want to do. So I want to make something similar to this. I want to select these two track, right click on it. I want to uh, click on create track stack. I'll make sure that summing stack is selected. Now I'll create a track and I can call it Synth Pulses because this is what I want my stem to be named. And this is done. Um, the other thing that I want to make sure is that I normally, to sort of make it a bit more error-proof and to keep things tidy, is that I create an empty region on it. Okay, just like that. So I can close them and I have a proper... Uh, you know, uh, overall viewing of the five tracks that I'm going to export the stems, and I can uh, select them all. I like to keep the cycle um, engaged. To do that, uh, if, if you want the cycle to have the same length of any region in Logic, you can select that region and then click on Command U, and you extend it automatically. Then I want to select them all, do the same file, export, five tracks as audio files. You want to again make sure that is in wave or whatever format your publisher asks you to deliver 24 bit length to project end. Uh, I want to have the cerebral stem, name of the track name, stem, and then the instrument that we're stemming out. You can see a file name file name example here and then you can click on export. It's gonna take a while. Wow, this took a while because my computer is doing a number of other things at the same time. But uh, it's done. So if you go on the folder here, you see that you have bounces and all the stems um, ready to go. So now if I drop those in, just to make sure that they're right, create new tracks, and you see I got all the stems, all the same length, ready to go. Let's have a listen to it. Classic editor friendly break. So as you can tell, 
all the stems are done, and that's fine. Um, so one thing that you want to do to save the uh, summon tracks that you already did, uh, that you prepare for this track, uh, to be used in future templates. This is something that I do all the time. At every track that I write, I always try to um, create a new instrument made of, a new summon track made of a number of instruments that I know that they're going to be stemmed down together, stemmed out uh, together, and then I'm going to save them uh, so that I can use them in another project. To do this, you click on the summon track, you open the library, and here on user patches, you can save them. You can save it. You, let's find a good category for it. I would go to pulses, obviously. Oh, actually, I have this one saved already. But anyway, if you go here, you can save it. Here it says that it exists, but I want to replace it anyway. And so next time that I need it for a project, actually, why don't we do it? Uh, I want to save this. And now if I open a new project in Logic with my empty template, go on my empty template, choose this is what I showed you in part one. And now my default instrument is piano, but uh, as, as you as you know from the previous session, if I was going here, say user patches, go to pulses, scene pulses, and now if I open it up, I'll find my track stack with scene pulses, with also all the mixing plugins that they wanted. So if that's something that you don't want in your in in your uh, summing track you you might want to decide not to not to have it. And uh, I have loads of this in uh, uh, saved that I can reuse in other session even orchestral stuff. For example, uh, one orchestral library that I use all the time is Cinematic Studio Strings from the Cinematic Studio series. And one thing that I like to do always is to keep the solo strings and the uh, full ensemble uh, both loaded on because I like to layer them even if I don't use solo strings for, well, solo passages. I have a, a section that is called full section, which is exactly this. It's not single patches, but, you know, like a number of things loaded on. And if I go on cinematic studio strings plus cinematic stu studio solo string, and I select it, it loads up the entire patch for me. Exactly, I want to. I want it uh, laid out. So I got a light ensemble, which is basically an ensemble patch, and then a reverb for it, for the reason that we explained before, because I want it all um, baked in in the stem that I'm going to export. I'm probably then going to change the name here of here to strings before exporting, and then I got cinematic. Uh, Studio solo string um, on each patch. Let's do this so we can scroll and change the plugin. And then I got the same first violin, but uh, for the ensemble, and then second violin solo strings, and then the second violin as ensemble. And I get all the reverb uh, done here. For example, the second violin, I know that I always EQ them a little bit, and so there is like a starting point that I can take the bypass out and you know work. Uh, work from there. Uh, I have all the articulation settings that I prepare for it, uh, ready to go. And, and this is just an example to say that if you invest a little bit of time to prepare all these little modules that you can add to your empty template, then writing becomes very fast. You can be very productive, write much more music. Um, you can avoid overloading your template with stuff that uh, you don't use. And this is just a way that I really like uh, to, uh, to write uh, fast, and especially for uh, music libraries, as I said. I hope you enjoyed this one. I um, hope it was useful somehow to your workflow. Please subscribe if you haven't done that already so that you can be notified every uh, week when I put a new video out. Uh, please comment with what you'd like to see or if you didn't like this video, tell me how I can improve in uh, creating something useful for you. And I'll see you next time. Bye.